Hello brothers and sisters of the Imperium. This is Chapter Master Morgan's Space Marine Super Speed Painting Guide. So speed painting Space Marines, a story as old as the Imperium itself. Hundreds if not thousands of videos on how to speed paint. Let me start by just explaining why I'm adding my painting video, my amateur painting video, to a whole myriad of other excellent painting videos. Well, I'm very formulaic and I love painting, but I do not like painting the way the traditional style of speed painting is done. So I have devised what works for me, which is a very fast way of painting in bulk. I collect not only Space Marines, but I collect Imperial Guard. So you can imagine you need, I need a method that is fun to paint, but also can paint really fast. And the final result objective wise is something half de decent and tabletop ready. So with that in mind, I devised this. Now this isn't, I didn't get this from anybody else. This is just something that I worked out myself that worked for me. And uh, with, with now that you actually get a penalty for not having miniatures that are fielded on tabletop, uh, it's more pertinent than ever to have a method that you can speed paint and produce something that looks tabletop ready. So let's start with the objectives of the painting. We're going to go through how to speed paint them, obviously. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me paint. As you can see, I've got my boys in the different stages of the speed painting in front of me. But let's focus firstly on the objectives. So the overarching objective for speed painting for me is maximum speed, minimum effort. Chapter Master Morgan is a super organized, standard operating procedure kind of guy. He's very objective, but he doesn't like spending days on end painting a single miniature, unless it's something very special like uh, Uriel Ventris or Rebute Girly Man, somebody like that. So if you want to just paint infantry or tanks or whatever, then this method is, is tried and tested. So let's count down the objectives that contribute to maximum speed, minimum effort. I, I'm lazy but organized. Number one, there's not going to be any mixing of paints today. The paints that we use are going to be straight out of the bottle. Number two, minimum amount of paints. I'm not going to make you have 20,000 different types of paints by 20 different thousand types of brands. We're just going to use a minimum amount of paints for speed. Number three, minimum amount of stages. Um, you can see the stages layout in here, which we'll go through in a minute, but minimum amount of stages in painting and clear cut stages of that. Number four, no expensive spray paints or airbrushes. Yes, I know the veterans of you out there will be like, Morgan, mate, use, a, use, a, <laughs> use an airbrush, use a spray paint undercoat, but we're not gonna be doing that today. This is for the average beginner painter and also maybe a veteran that would like to paint a bit faster. So, so this, this method is for everybody. Number five, no consume, <laughs> no time consuming, tedious re retest, recess painting or edge highlighting. What I mean by that is in the traditional style, you go around every single recess and fill that in. That, that just does not work for me. That, I, I don't have enough hours in the day to do that. And even if I did, I wouldn't want to. Um, I have tried it and the results were not pretty. Um, so, and also recess highlighting, go rounding every edge. We're not doing that today. Um, obviously that does give good results if you have that skill, but that's not what we have today. So what are the stages that we're gonna go through? And that is what we're gonna do now. So let's super speed paint Space Marines. Stage one, you have your gray, your shameful gray miniature and you need to get a base coat on him. You need to get an undercoat on him, okay? Very simple, I use Vallejo, Vallejo, I think the J is silent, maybe it isn't. Let me know in the comments. Surface Primer, 74600, white blanco, acrylic pureurethane under, undercoat. Get a big fat brush, stab it, let it dry for a minute, do another coat. Two thin layers, yep, try not to get roused when I say that. That's all you need. Stage one, undercoating, done. Stage two, 
the base color that you need. So you can use any color you want to do this, but obviously in this example we're using my Jade Fists. Yes, this is my own homebrew Ultramarian successor chapter, and it must be the single most asked question in any comments chat feed, image that I've posted on Facebook or Instagram or in the YouTube chat. If I've just sent you a link to this video, this is why you're here. It is Gorse Blaster Green. I originally, when I first designed uh, my Jade Fist chapter, actually decided to, uh, it was actually from Dawn of War 1. I designed this color scheme in the army painter inside the game and I needed a bright color which wasn't like any other color of Space Marine faction that I could find. If anyone has found a color of Space Marine in this, let me know, but I doubt it, lads. Um, and it was this beautiful jade color and I originally used to mix blue and yellow and make my own paint until one day I thought, let's go into Games Workshop. Let's find whether they actually have this color and they do. Gorse Blaster Green, this gorgeous jade color. This is the base, again, Stab it, big fat brush application. Stab it, one layer, two thin layers. It is a layer paint, it's not a base, but it does come in pretty thick. You don't need to thin it down at all, um, but do put it on nice and light. Two, two, two thin coats, <laughs> two thin coats. That's stage two. Citadel layer, Gorse Blaster Green. Stage three. Recessing, indeed. Now, you can tell there's a theme going on here. Fat brush. <laughs> Fat brush, but this time we're not gonna do two thin layers. We're gonna do one very heavy layer of Coelia Green Shade Citadel paint. This is a shade paint by Citadel. It's this really gorgeous dark green in it creates these beautiful complementary green recesses um, in the miniature here. Now in terms of application, like I said, um, if any of you have seen my speed painting Death Guard where I use contrast paints, uh, it's very similar. Big fat brush, just literally lather it on. Lather, stabbing, um, preventing any really bad pooling. But as you can see here, I've let some pooling happen here and there and you can actually use that to your advantage, um, especially in the under areas here and here. Um, you get these really gorgeous, nice, deep recesses. And if you notice that I actually paint over the gun, I don't paint any other color, and it lets you, it's very liberating the early stage of the speed painting, because you can really start to understand the model and the lines. All of the lines come out. You've done your base and you just pile on this really heavy uh, kind of shade recess everywhere. It'll be absolutely soaking um, once you've seen it. You can see the way it's pulled around the feet there, um, but you'll see why in the next stage, why we've done that. That is stage three, shade painting, nice and heavy, one very heavy coat. Okay, stage four, we're zipping through nice and fast now. And you can see he's made a, re a return, Gorse Blaster Green. Hang on a minute, you're saying, Morgan. Didn't you just base in this color? That's absolutely correct, I did. And I also highlight in it as well. But, trademark Chapter Master Morgan 2021, I call this stage dry lighting. Why do you call it dry lighting? Well, it's highlighting and dry brushing in the same procedure. What you do is you get a small-ish flat brush like this. By the way, this is my favorite kind of brush ever. Why? Because it has a point and also you can brush across the flat like that. So what you do is you get your uh, Gorse Blaster Green layer or whatever other kind of layer brush, uh, layer paint you're gonna use for this and you use it like a dry brush. Yep, so get yourself some a little bit of kitchen towel, dip it in, Pat it down, make sure maybe, I think the optimum amount of, you one dunk, one, two, three, and that's enough, yeah? It doesn't need to be completely because you're coating it. So what you do then is you lay the paintbrush flat over the miniature, so not into it straight, and then you just gently dab over the top, gently dab over the top. So I usually start with his shin plate here, gently dab, Gently dab, let's make sure he's in focus for you lads. 
gently dab, gently dab. So you're dry lighting, but you're highlighting at the same time. Rotate the miniature like that. Yep, you work your way around to slowly flat down, flat, flat, flat over the edges. You see the way you just go flat over the edges. So you're kind of dragging the brush, turning the miniature. If that's as you see his little butt plates there, you don't attack it sideways like that. You go against where the recess is. So the opposite way of the recess, the horizontal axis, like that. So all, you see the way, this is guy I did earlier. See the way all the recesses stay, but if you go over, then you sleep, work your way around. You'll need to go around maybe two, three times. Take it nice and light again on the top, on the power pack, just across like that, flat across the part. Again, this little grill at the back, flat across, this bit flat down. Again, flat brush like that. And that's the way that you can do dry lighting, okay? Um, if anyone else has found anyone else that does this particular method, then do let me know. But I found this fantastic. And what this does is it means you don't need to, you might need to do a little bit of touching up. Um, like especially sometimes on the feet, when you when you do the dry lighting like that, it can sometimes go in. You might need to just do some recessing. But the beautiful thing about this is you're highlighting and you don't need to do all the recesses and go around all on the inside. And that, my friends, is dry lighting. Stage five, base metals and others. So as we saw earlier in the miniature, uh, the entire thing was painted in green. And now in this stage is where you go around with a medium to small brush and you fill in all the metals and any other purity seals or anything else. Just the basing, mind, the back of the legs. For the metals, I always just use good old reliable lead belcher. For the gold, I use the fantastic and versatile Retributor Armour. Purity seals, I'll either use uh, an Evil Sun Scarlet, which is a really nice bright red, or if you don't have that, you can always use the traditional Mephiston red, either or are fine. And then for the purity seals, I just use some Wraithbone. So as you can see here, haven't done any shading on it yet, just gone around. My Jade Fists uh, will have gold on the, uh, on the shoulders. I, use, I don't use any brown. I just think it's weird having brown leather pouches. I use all the, all of the pouches of metal. Uh, I use a little bit of gold on the top of the, the pistol there, and then gold shoulder scales, and then um, pauldrons, should I say, and then metal for the, uh, the helmet just behind there, and also some metal in there. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to one of my favorite new paints, uh, which is Stormhost Silver. Um, I don't do red eyes for my Space Marines. I actually, I don't know if you can see in there, I use Stormhost Silver for the eye lenses. Um, I just don't know, I'm just not a fan of red eye lenses. I know that the, it goes well against green. The ultra, Ultramarines use red eye lenses. But this is a really good color if you want a really bright, reflective silver um, for your eye lenses. And you can always do a, a, a contrast over the top of that if you want a different color. Um, or even a shade, but it's a really nice bright silver, much lighter than a good old traditional lead belcher. So that's it, that's that stage, just basically just tidying up all the bits that weren't previously painted. You'll notice here that when you do your shoulders, a lot of the time you'll get some gold on the power pack, but that will obviously be sorted out in the next stage. That was stage five. So finally, stage six, the end almost. Um, I call this stage the final touching up and shading, or should I say final shading and touching up. So what I use for this is for the shading, uh, for the metals, I know a lot of people use Agrac Thirst Shade, which is the brown shade, um, but I'm actually not a fan of that. I like my metals to be doused in good old reliable Null Noil. I use that for all my metals, so the shoulder pads, uh, the, uh, the, the Aquila on the front, his chest plate, all the metals, the gun, a nice healthy slathering of Null Noil on all the metals. Um, in terms of the purity seals, I use, I do use Agrax Earthshade. Agrax Earthshade on top of Wraithbone gives this really nice one coat uh, kind of purity seal, the little 
paper there it, and like that's just one coat that's all you need to do and it looks really good that's the shading in terms of any other extra highlighting or tidying up as I mentioned earlier um, you will once you do the previous stage you will get little splashes of null oil or um, lead belcher or gold on some of the green so again just use gorse blaster green and just go and touch up any areas uh, with a small brush and, uh, and if there's any recessing that could be tidied up a bit, you can do that as well. Using the dry lighting method, the flat brush method. Um, and finally, um, a good shout out again to another couple of paints I've just recently discovered. If you really want your gold to pop, you can use one of two or both um, of the following. Uh, the first is actually this game color. It's called polished gold. Um, and if you use that on the Again, use the dry brushing method, so only a little bit, dry lighting method. So get most of it off, and then you can just drag it down, and it gives this really gorgeous reflective gold effect. And as you can see, I've done the edges of the uh, pauldrons in that as well, and obviously stabbed some in here, and then feathered it out to give that kind of nice center. Um, you can get a similar, but not as shiny effect as Liberator Gold. Um, that's a slightly lighter version of Retributor Gold, uh, which is the one that we based in. And this is another Games Workshop Liberator Gold. That will give you um, this kind of, rather than a deep orangey kind of gold, it will give you more of a white gold, which is really good for highlighting. So that is the final stage, stage six. Um, in terms of the base color, I would say I'm, Again, I'm lazy but formulaic. And on the bases, I don't like fussy bases. So all I've used on that is a layer of Rakaf, uh, Rakaf flesh. <laughs> Should have rehearsed that. And just some general kind of powder that you can buy in bags from eBay. Um, you just put some PVA, dunk it, leave it for a couple of hours, take it outside, shake it, blow it. I'm not a fussy base guy, um, I, I'm not keen on putting grass or anything else on there. But what I would say about base colours, with whatever base colour you've got, always make it complementary to the model. For example, if you've got a greenish model like this, don't make the base green, it will just clash. Have you noticed that this is kind of an opposite pastel colour, but it's a pastel brown rather than a green, and always have something that clashes um, so that the model stands out more on the base. That would be what I say about that. And that is the final stage. And I'm just going to do another final little conclusion. Um, because I'm sure you're like, Morgan, I don't want to paint my miniatures in bright green and gold. Can this, can this method be applied to other chapters? Yes, it can. And let's have another little look at that now. So recently, my mate, um, he's he's not really into 40k but he just loves the aesthetic and he was like Morgan mate can you paint me an ultramarine and at that point I'd never painted an ultramarine I had uh, and I'd only ever painted my Jade Fist chapter and I thought well let's see if I can use the current speed painting method to paint an ultramarine so this is the example here below he's only about 70 percent finished um as far as far as speed painting goes um he's in the final highlight area as we mentioned earlier the gold needs touching up some of his highlighting needs touching up but this was made in exactly the same method as the jade fists so what do i mean by that instead of uh, the the um, gorse blaster green i use good old traditional mccrag blue as a base and then instead of the coelia green shade i used drakenhof nightshade this is a really nice dark blue and as you can see um, the ultramarine here rather than a traditional ultramarine being bright blue uh, i really like midnight blue um, I actually got the inspiration for this type of ultramarine paint scheme from the Dark Imperium box. Let me show you here. Can you see that, lads? You've got this really gorgeous dark blue with really nice dark recesses, and that's really what I was going for. You can see it as well on the front of the box there. Um, and th rather than being bright blue, that's what I was going for with this guy here. And I think I've got some way towards that. And this is using the exact same method that I use for the Jade Fist. So let's quickly recap. I hope you've been paying attention. 
So you base in Macrag Blue, then you do the Dragonoff Nightshade, then you use your flat uh, dry lighting brush to go over, and then you can even use, you can see he's a little bit, he's got a little bit of extra highlight there. Um, because he's not as bright color as that, I actually used um, a little bit of a lighter blue to highlight there. And that was a layer called Baroth Blue. And again, I just used, a, I just used my flat brush my dry lighting brush, I really dried it down and I just gave him a little bit of highlight so that that blue, that contrast would really stick out there. So it just goes to show that this method can be used on different chapter paint schemes as well. Um, do let me know down in the comment section if you can try it on one of yours. Again, the, the principle is simple. Get yourself a base color and get yourself um, a shade. Um, a, a complementary one. So if it's blue, it's blue. If it's yellow, it's yellow. If it's green, it's green, etc., etc. And see how you get on with it. Um, the, I'm excited now because, as you may have seen in my recent Space Hulk retro review um, of the board game, I've got a whole bunch of Blood Angels in there, and I am really looking forward to trying this method with a base coat of probably either. Uh, Mephiston Red or Evil Sun Scarlet because I want my um, I want them to be nice and orangey. I want orangey uh, Blood Angels, and then I'm going to probably get there is a red variant of a shade color, so I'm going to be using that. Um, the only other question I've had or down in the comments previously is Morgan, why don't you just save yourself time and use contrast paints? Actually, well I have tried it. Um, there is this color here. Uh, a little final shout out to Contrast Athematic Blue. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that properly. Um, Athematic Blue. Asthmatic Blue? Whatever. And I did try that. I thought that I could just put that over white. Um, here's an example of uh, an aggressor. I actually dry lighted him. So um, I did try it on him and the blue that came out was really too bright and neon-y. You can see the one on the left is the traditional method that I showed you today, and that one there. The recesses just are not dark enough. And plus, that's even with some dry lighting, so I've improved that. Before, it was just, it did not look good. So, th this is somewhere between using a contrast method and a traditional method. And for me, I cannot get the same effect um, for the Jade Fist with contrast paint. It's just not possible. I've tried it. So you can comment down below saying just use contrast, but it doesn't work. Sorry, lads. It just doesn't. And that's that. Thank you very much for walking, watching my super speed painting video. Do, as I always say, feed the YouTube algorithm for me. Uh, like, comment, and follow. Hit the notification bell. I'm aiming to do at least one or two videos a week. Don't hold me to that. I've got two jobs, uh, two companies that I manage, so give me a break, guys. Um, but I will do my best, because I love making this content for you guys. I seriously do. I love your comments down below. And uh, yeah, um, love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Um, the Emperor protects. Take care, and goodbye. Wait, hang on a minute. Sorry, guys. Sorry. One more thing, as Columbo would say. Um, thinning your paints. I do thin my paints slightly. And what I want to do is I want to take this opportunity to show you how easy it is to make a wet palette. You only need three things. As you can see, two of them here. A bit of kitchen cloth, as you can see. A shallow uh, sandwich box or a whatever you want to call this microwave container uh, with a lid. And... Just some greaseproof paper, non-stick greaseproof baking paper, and you just tear yourself a little slice of this. I've literally just torn that out. Put this in here, like that. There you go. You can trim it down a little bit if you want. Put your greaseproof paper in, like that. Press it in. Literally, only takes two minutes to do. What you then do is pour it under the tap, which I'm going to do now. Shake it out, pour it under the tap again. So pour your money, pour your, pour the water, put it under the tap, shake it out, shake all the water out, put that in, pour it under the tap again, shake it out until there's as much water out as possible. I'm just going to show you very quickly what that looks like. 
And there we go, that's what it looks like. As you can see here, only three things and it literally just took me under 60 seconds to do. It's a little bit messy, you can tidy up the edges and then obviously just keep it when you're finished with it, put the lid on the top like that. And this is what I use um, when I'm doing, you know, even if I'm using layer paints or base colors, I just give it a little dab in there just to lighten it up a little bit, just to loosen up the paint a little bit because, it, you know, Games Workshop paints can be really thick. And that's it. A little bit of bonus content for you. How to make a <laughs> wet palette in under 60 seconds for under 60 pence. All right, lads. See you later. Take care.